Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today, as it always seems to be the case on a Monday, we have a lot to discuss, specifically what went down night three in Amsterdam of the Eras Tour, Travis Kelsey potentially getting a little emotional, Patrick and Brittany Mahomes were in attendance, and it's also today the one-year anniversary of a very, very special day in Taylor Swift history. One in which I was a part of, which we'll get to at the end of today's episode. But we have to obviously start out with recapping and going through Taylor Swift's shows in Amsterdam, which I said last week, I felt pretty confident that Patrick and Brittany Mahomes were going to be in attendance this weekend at one of the shows. They have been in Europe for the last few weeks. We maybe thought they were going to go to the London shows. They didn't. I was then a little bit thrown off because they were in London earlier in the week. They went to Wimbledon. And so I thought to myself, okay, maybe they're not going to Amsterdam this weekend. But turns out they made it for night three, which was the night to go to, certainly, because it was a uh, it was an emotional one, to say the least. Travis showed up kind of surprisingly night two in Amsterdam. I guess he was in attendance up in one of the suites, though fans didn't really seem to recognize him or notice him. And it wasn't until the end of the show when Taylor was walking off stage and kind of like waving to all the fans and stuff, Travis was with her. And that's when I feel like people realize, oh wait, Travis Kelsey is in attendance and he was there. Again, they're just both so cute when they are leaving the venue, waving. Travis is doing everything in his power to hype up Taylor, to get the crowd going. You just love to see it. You just love to see a guy who is incredibly comfortable with himself and his own success and who he is, that he has zero problem hyping up his partner and allowing all the fans and everyone to shower her with love. Excellent. Um, So then, and we'll get to the surprise songs and stuff, because really the one I want to talk about is Night 3. So Night 3, Amsterdam. Travis is there, obviously, as I said. Patrick and Brittany come with some of their other friends. Ross, Travis's best friend, is also there. And they were not in the VIP tent. They were up in a suite. Um... So I feel like I feel like the angles or the the camera quality is a lot better when fans are filming from the VIP tent rather than up in a suite. But we still got a lot of excellent content. Patrick and Brittany just dancing, hyping Taylor up. They were very sweet and cute during Lover. I think they were sort of dancing with each other. Um, they're just the best. I just think Patrick and Brittany, I'm I'm from Kansas City, so I obviously love Patrick Mahomes and I've loved Patrick Mahomes way before all of this Taylor Swift stuff. But I think he's so clearly, he's obviously, in my opinion, the best quarterback in the NFL. But then he also is just, he's very comfortable, like Travis, having fun, enjoying himself, not taking himself too seriously, just in embracing all of this Taylor mayhem like he's really taken it on he's um he's always said very positive things about Taylor obviously Brittany and Taylor have become very close over the the last year or so and become good friends so I just this whole marriage if you will of the Chiefs and Taylor and Patrick and Travis and Brittany with Taylor it's just it's worked so well And it's been so fun to watch as someone who has been a Taylor fan for so long and a Chiefs fan for so long. The combination of the two has just been amazing. But the real, I think, headline of night three was a mashup that Taylor chose to do during her surprise song set that was dedicated specifically for Travis Kelsey. Okay, the three songs she chooses to mash up are Mary's Song, from her debut album, Everything Is Changed from Red and So High School, obviously from TTPD. Okay, let's break all this down. We obviously know So High School is about Travis Kelsey. The fact that she, cause she already sings a portion of that song during the actual tour in the actual set list. So the fact that then she chose to incorporate it for the surprise songs, which are typically songs that she doesn't sing elsewhere in the show, made it abundantly clear that it was about Travis. And then 
to add Mary's song. I think from the beginning when Taylor and Travis started dating, I think a lot of people felt like this was in a weird way Taylor and Travis's song. Because in the song, if you don't know the song, which I don't know why you're watching this if you don't know <laughs> Mary's song, um, but it's a great song about two kids falling in love and kind of chronic chronicling their relationship over a lifetime. And um, at the end of the song, Taylor sings, I'll be 87, you'll be 89. You'll still look at me like the stars that shine in the sky. Which basically, she, in, in the song, she's talking about their age. She'll be 87 and he'll be 89. But if you know anything about Taylor and Travis, you know that Taylor was born in 1989. That's kind of her year number, if you will. And Travis, his football jersey number is 87. So he'll be 87 and she'll be 89. So I think there's been for a long time, people have been wondering when is she going to sing Mary's song as a surprise song because it does feel very Travis coded. Well, she incorporated it into this little mashup. And then everything has changed is about like meeting someone and falling in love and realizing that what you thought you wanted before or what you had before wasn't good and now you're in this new thing and it's amazing and wonderful and you're with somebody who uh, you really want to be with and you love spending time with. And so just the combination of the three songs, it was just so, so clearly aimed towards Travis. She was basically serenading him in this performance, but a lot of fans were capturing footage of Travis during this moment. Now, again, because he was in a suite, it was hard to fully see what was going on with his face, but there were some people who feel like Travis may have been a little emotional. There was a moment where he may have, and again, I don't know for sure because again, it wasn't like very super clear, but it kind of did look like Travis wiped away a tear potentially. And we know Travis is a crier. We know he's not afraid to be emotional. So wouldn't surprise me if he was getting a, a bit emo over this mashup that was for him. But it was just so cute. It was so sweet. And a part of me thinks it was, um, it was kind of a nod to, because we'll get to it, the one year anniversary of a very important day in the Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift relationship. I kind of feel like that was why Taylor did that performance, but so sweet, so cute. She also did a mashup of Sweeter Than Fiction and Holy Ground, two songs I absolutely love. So the people that got these surprise songs, Night Three Amsterdam, you won. Congratulations, you got some of the best songs. Incredible absolutely incredible. Um, some of the other surprise songs she did, she did Guilty as Sin with Untouchable on, I believe, night one. And then she did The Archer and Question. Strong. I love Guilty as Sin. That's one of my favorite songs off of TTPD. And then for night two, she did a mashup of I'm Gonna Get You Back and Dress. And then You Are In Love and Cowboy Like Me. Strong, very, very strong. I feel like all of these nights got really great surprise songs, but you really can't beat. You really can't beat night three. That was peak. Um, and then as I said, as I alluded to, it is today the one year anniversary of when Travis Kelsey saw Taylor Swift for the first time during the Eras tour in Kansas City, a show that I've said this before, I was very privileged to be at. I feel like I was a part of the Taylor and Travis experience. Um, so yeah, today, one year ago today, Travis saw Taylor Swift performing, wanted to give her the friendship bracelet. She didn't want to see him or that's what the story was. And then obviously it then led to Jason asking Travis about the concert on his podcast. Travis saying, you know, he wanted to give her a bracelet with his phone number, the whole thing. And now here we are one year later. It really is crazy how, I know people say everything happens for a reason, but it really is crazy how, like I, I often think about what if Jason hadn't asked Travis how the Taylor Swift concert was? What if he had just completely forgot, forgot to ask that question or it didn't come to his mind or they just breezed over it and they never talked about it? We wouldn't be here today. <laughs> Well, we would be here probably, but not talking about Travis Kelsey um, in relation to Taylor Swift. It's just, it's very, very wild. And I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful that Taylor chose to perform in Kansas City. I'm grateful that Travis chose to go to the show. All of those things, um, because it's given us so much. And I, for one, again, as a Kansas City Taylor Swift fan, I am incredibly 
incredibly grateful. So that is that for today's show. As always, let me know your thoughts, your feelings in the comments, um, how you've been feeling about this one year anniversary, like some of your favorite Taylor and Travis moments over the last year. Let me know all of it. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.